Hello. Hi, Yuvan. Okay, hello. Hi, Sangeeta. What's up? How are you? And happy Madras Day, everyone. Most importantly. Yeah, happy Madras Day. Huh. Wait a minute. Okay, so I have my phone on a music stand, which okay. I'm adjusting <laughs> to my face. Yeah, okay. I hope this yeah, is good. Yeah, we can see you. Yes, I can see you. I'm sure everyone can see you. Hmm. Is good. But thank you so much for coming out and joining us. Okay, I think let's just give it two more minutes because people are still joining in. Sure. Yeah. But how has your Madras day been, Yuvan? What have you My, been up to? Okay, so I took a bunch of children to watch butterflies at a place called Kotur Puram Urban Forest today. Okay. Uh, it was a bit thin on butterflies because uh, it was. unexpectedly hot okay uh so usually when it's cloudy and windy this is the time when uh butterflies from the western ghats because of the monsoons they migrate to the eastern states uh but but yeah we saw some 12 species or so uh with uh, younger elementary kids who are about 6 uh, to 9 years of age so it was all very a lot of fun and yelling and yeah oh mm. that's really cool that is no oh. really so okay mm. uh quick uh, well i don't know i guess a sort of flashback for the audience you were hosted this amazing show walk on saturday with tulika for launching this amazing book show walk shout out so um and he did, and he gave us a whole lot of information some of which we will be sharing today and he mentioned this really interesting fact about butterflies migrating to sri lanka and how they fly over the ocean i still remember that and i found that really fascinating so i can only imagine how amazing that butterfly walk must have been today honestly speaking for those kids hmm. but yeah i think we can start now so hi everyone uh, welcome to the live i'm sangeeta i'm from tulika i will be hosting this session today and of course we have with us yuvan avis um award winning naturalist writer educator and activist if there is anything i'm missing please feel free to add yuvan um because yeah, it's quite a it. list of things which is i think incredible first of all and um, as mentioned we are here to you know talk about his life a little bit and also about this amazing book which we just released shore walk um which i think is just fascinating it's a story about uh, a girl with her grandfather palium who walk along the beach and have a small adventure of sorts and there are some incredible facts about coastal life uh, you know and coastal biodiversity which yuvan has really kind of weaved into this narrative and you'll really take a lot from this um but you know you want the first thing i really want to ask you is in the introduction of the story um before the story starts you say that you always knew you wanted to be a naturalist as a child so what really inspired you or sparked your interest to kind of go in this direction i uh, you know what each time somebody asks me that uh you know there is no clear answer to that but there's something i've learned over time so it it is my uh, school's influence uh, it was a wild space i i studied in a krishnamurti school where the philosophical grounding had a lot of uh, rights of nature in it you know and including it in our uh, uh, learning in a very profound way and then i had a couple of teachers who were quite inspiring naturalists or, or at least nature educators and then my, i had my mom who at an early age kind of spotted this interest and kept feeding into it and creating experiences for me uh but i wouldn't i don't like to think that i'm special because as a teacher what i've found is that so i kind of engage with children right from 2 years of age to college and and uh, you know on that show parents and everybody else you know yeah 2 to 99 or whatever yeah so what i have found is there's when children are young everybody is simply uh, enraptured by the natural world um and and other educators have kind of pointed to this you know richard louv or 
uh, Lucy Jones. Mm-hmm. Uh, when somebody is a child, that you know, Edward O. Wilson called it biophilia. Okay. There's a natural inclination to be in contact and learn from mm-hmm. some what we kind of uncomfortably call the natural world, as if there's anything other than that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yes, and I also see that when it's let's say by the time the child is an adolescent you mm-hmm. know by 12 13 14 if that interest is not supported that window kind of closes mm, okay. um and after that you try and create all these experiences and everything it's it's uphill mm. so yes mm. okay so that's fascinating so you were, i i mm. think what i'm getting is that you were also kind of fortunate enough to have this sort of support system or system of people around you who really kind of nurtured that interest for you to go ahead with it yes yes yeah which mm. is which is pretty cool and i think like you rightly mentioned um i think that's mm. kind of what's lacking in i guess a lot of situations and systems in a way just not giving enough nurture to that interest uh, absolutely absolutely it's not the interest it's also a um fundamental uh, thing for children's well being we are increasingly yeah. learning access to the natural world just starting from having access to panoramic vision you know there's yeah. a, a, a neuroscientist andrew huberman who mm. who i follow very keenly he talks about how if you get to look at the ocean the sky you know vast views your nervous system switches to parasympathetic which means you yeah. de-stress and kind of relax as when you're indoors you practice something called convergent vision which right, right. no matter how uh, you might have everything in the world if you're sitting mm. indoors all the time you're stressed out for sure you know <laughs> yeah uh, starting from there two things like an outdoor space so for instance when we went on that show walk a right. bunch of children and all of them had their own inclinations and learning styles one child was interested in learning the names another yeah. child was interested in speaking and discussing it can support various kinds of learning styles as and have the child engage in the real world which then comes with with a, with the strong factor of relevance right you know uh which 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 is immersive and multisensorial all these things are important for one's physical psychological spiritual well being so uh, yeah yeah just to underscore the importance of nature yeah. in the well being of the child and the human being it's not like a, you know yeah after you are a child you don't need it yeah <laughs> <laughs> no but i think it's really amazing that you know because even as children right because i think most children have that natural sense of curiosity for most things and of course nature being one of the prime the a sort of primary focus in that aspect right you're just curious mm. and you want to know and i think and that curiosity is important which is why i love the way when you say in the book that you've never you know sort of met a child who's never been curious and excited by nature yeah um, yeah which is so true but you know um moving on i kind of want to you know talk about palya mana in the book um you know he is uh, the story as i mentioned is about kadlamma this girl and her fisher fisherman grandfather uh, palyam who go on a walk right on the beach and have you know this sort of adventure yes show sure, rock yeah. <laughs> right just going to multiple shout outs to this book and this session yeah. okay. but um in your introduction you do mention that you know palyam mana has been a teacher to you and he's an he's an actual character this you know is not a fictional character is a person is a character based on a real life person so how has palyamanna influenced you you know what has he taught you and how has he sort of influenced your journey uh, with being a naturalist yeah so firstly um um along with the team uh, i think some of whom are actually watching me right now i don't know i, th- I think i saw their names uh a bunch of us we've been documenting uh the north tamil nadu coast right from pulikat to kaliveli mm. it's about uh, 200 kilometers uh looking at biodiversity threats to these places and documenting local knowledge of people living here which is kind of fast vanishing and not just because we want to know the local knowledge but 
those stories become evocative in protecting uh, these you know fragile coastal landscapes so um one of my greatest teachers have been fisher elders in many of these places and perhaps the most important one of them is palaya manna from urur kupam uh who you know when i first met him uh, he was standing on the beach and he said uh, that you know feeling the wind and the, you know the height of the wave and everything he said what fish will be caught that day and some of these boats which went in with uh, crab nets will come back empty handed and that happened and i'm like what are you seeing you know the sea seems blue and the wind seems uh, the same to me one of the things uh, i later learned was that when i'm speaking to fisher folk you know local i'm speaking about artisanal fisher folk who've yeah. been living on the coast for centuries who are, who are indigenous people as such you know it's yeah. a difficult word indigenous what it means but if if i may use it um is that their knowledge of current and wind so for instance if i were to ask you what direction was the wind blowing yesterday at 4 o'clock oh, okay uh i i, I also don't know. <laughs> yeah yeah i'm not, I, don't, i don't i'm not hypocritical but uh folks would encounter uh, you know kind of recount stories 30 years ago and it will be linked to the wind direction so that the sense of where the wind is blowing what directions are we standing in how the current is flowing is kind of is the first uh, orientation point when they perceive space and land so that was one of the uh, first lessons i learned from him you know you go there you orient to the wind uh, look at the ocean is it calm rough what is the wave height how is the current you know that day we had a way of uh, looking at the longshore current uh, so each time i go to the beach i kind of note those down first thing this 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 and all everything unfolding there wind and wave and current is a active player uh, into it and then later on into uh, how how coast and ocean uh, have divine aspects to it you know so one of the things uh, yeah, he um, sometimes uses pronouns for the ocean oh. now, not as an inanimate thing but sometimes it's it's very unpredictable it's moody you know uh, another time i was in a village called noshi in goa mm. and they use the word I'm, uh, in konkani i'm sh- i'm sure i'm pronouncing it wrong it's called sutti butti and okay. then and the spring tide is called zorgot okay and these are also words for human emotions okay so zorgot is when somebody is extremely moody and they're kind of uh, getting triggered easily and everything so spring tide of the ocean is actually correlated to that so so the ocean is seen as an emotion a deeply emotional entity so so yeah. those are some world views i was able to adopt for myself which actually enriched my own perception and also the stories i kind of tell people uh, uh on on show walks on on uh, other places um yeah no but that's really cool and i do mm. know this is again something you have mentioned in the book which is why it was really cool to kind of hear you talk about it right now you mm-hmm. know um to get a sort of more holistic view about it though it's been explained very well in the book um but you know having said that what is your most memorable experience of a shore walk or what has been your most special shore walk to date if you have one oh no <laughs> <laughs> so many shore walks uh what was the most okay the most memorable experience is the recent shore walk because it's <laughs> recently in mind yeah otherwise there are there are so many uh, you know good experiences things i've learned and come back uh that that I, i wouldn't be able to easily recount one but uh, last time uh there were these small kids who you know this thing i kind of repeatedly observe is that as soon as you can create a kind of connect with the space you know give them a, you know one of the things we gave was a field guide so that the children could speak the names and as soon as you can create that connect you can stand back and they are totally engaged uh, they are picking up things watching things asking questions you know pulling other people into their adventure that was uh, really moving for me to kind of stand back and watch you know 
so sometimes as an educator what i try to do is i do a lot of back work in creating these facilitation points so that during the actual thing to the extent possible i can stand back and let the landscape be teacher in its own way and i have let the the child and or, or the participant and the landscape have a conversation with each other whatever whatever that how uh, it may unfold um yeah no because i mm. also agree with that because and because i've been on a show walk with you so i know you really make it a point to make it as interactive and explorative as possible for people and i think for children they just have so much of fun with it because they you really get, it's almost like an open field right to go and just discover whatever you can whatever you want you know what is the what are you curious about explore that curiosity you know come and ask questions and it was just amazing to see that and the way children engaged was just something else um but you know having said that you've been doing this for such a long time now you know what are your insights of you know teaching children and you know kind of engaging with them what are my insights uh okay mm, i would kind of put them in like a few compartments one is uh, one uh, so i work with a team of young naturalists uh, for uh, organization called palloir trust Mm. yeah so one of the things we have been repeatedly finding is that uh nature based learning or nature education is a extraordinary equalizing force so we work a lot with uh, children from disadvantaged communities okay uh, it could be a uh, uh, fisher folk or uh, irula uh, children from domestic labor communities and um, if we can link you know language learning academic science mm. learning with uh experiences uh in such an outdoor landscape uh the intrinsic motivation to learn for the child is phenomenal which the traditional classroom simply cannot do okay so i i remember for instance uh, from urukupam you know along the village we walked a couple of uh, children there they started r- you know language learning is a challenge for them sometimes but they started writing english like anything uh okay. and some of their teachers came back and told us you know what what did you guys do you know their uh, interest in language went up what we did was we created experiences in the coast where language was a portal into experiencing their home landscape more richly yeah okay so then the the drive to do what it takes to learn the language the child develops uh on his or her own um th- that has been one of my most uh, profound learnings as in my journey as a teacher among among others um let's see what else so in in this vein one of the things we did kind of compiling our learnings is uh, create a book called sea shells which you can download on our palloir website what we are saying is so we created that book based on various activities we've done for children between age 3 and 12 um their developmental needs their academic goals multiple intelligences um and so on if you have a beach and a ocean everything is taken care of if you know how to creatively use that space and create experiences for and with the child or the learner so i mean i learned last time as much as you know the the four year old who came for the walk so I, I, but uh, yeah yeah so i would underscore that as a as a crucial learning for me insight learning yeah no but that's amazing i think to really um kind of have children really i think learn from their surroundings right as much as possible which again is something that i don't think you see too much of in a lot of i think education system so to speak so it's really cool that you're kind of facilitating that and trying to really create that system and environment uh which is just fab so okay you're also an activist so you know to talk a little bit about that what has been your most rewarding experience as an activist okay so some in some places activist is a bad word so yeah. i don't call myself an activist to be politically correct other places i call myself unapologetically uh 
firstly for me that means to be an active citizen in society okay which means you ask questions you are thinking for yourself mm. and you make efforts to be informed and and you are a an agent of change and engagement mm. in your of course your your family your your community you know the city everything yeah so that's what activism means for me um to to kind of take away other shades of okay. meaning it might have um but what has it um so okay a uh, uh, important uh, uh, moment in yeah so what one coastal landscape right now in extraordinary danger is uh, pulicat which is okay. the north of uh, tamil nadu uh, and, and not chennai of course and tiruvallur um it's our first storm barrier you know when a, when we get a cyclone we get it from the northeast so it's mangroves and shoals and sand barrier islands actually buffer it uh it's so the kosasthalaya river flows into it and that's our greatest flood catchment now that is uh, uh threatened right now by a port a mega port uh, okay. which is going to be built proposed to be built a few kilometers south of it uh, i think that day we learned how coastal erosion takes place Uh, so you know uh, we have a citizenship program in in uh, abacus montessori school one of the schools i uh, uh, school i coordinate a program uh, and the class 11 decided they're going to engage with the pulicat campaign so in class 11 we were doing especially during the pandemic a class campaign so right. they said we're going to engage with pulicat and so uh, we did a trip there we looked at the north chennai landscape the hydrological connectivity we spoke to the fisher women there who have been thrice evicted from their places because of uh, industrialization yeah and their uh, villages actually are now deep in the ocean because of erosion happening there yeah mm. and and so they came back they wrote an endorsement a letter which they got uh, signs from about 500 students from 50 different schools in chennai they made some really powerful art uh which we then created a press conference around okay and then what happened there was there's something called a public hearing which happens uh for uh, for these you know development projects where people kind of come and say you know i want this i don't want this for for their own reasons usually it's a sham because they make sure who they kind of tailor who will come and say what but no uh, it need not be also but um because of the children's campaign the media covered it so well next day the thiruvallur district collector cancelled the public hearing uh so what happened that's like a spanner in the works for the port uh because once the public hearing is cancelled all their licenses and everything start going towards expiry uh and but usually people do this because let's say they are expecting a whole bunch of people coming to speak against this project they'll cancel off the public hearing because if that happens then you can't have the project but it was a kind of a a real change a bunch of children who worked on something for 4 5 months could make and that was learning for me that was extraordinarily em- empowering for the children themselves oh i know i just did a bunch of stuff and and things happened on on ground yeah no that's incredible because you know something i was going to get to and ask was that you know how do you really think children can be you know active members of change in the society and you know i think just hearing that story is really inspiring in a sense um but i really but still you know like what are other ways in which you think children can really help in terms of in their own small ways it doesn't have to be something you know extremely big but in their like i mean it's drops that make an ocean right by the end of the day so how can you know kids make that small but significant change uh, according to you in terms of climate change or conservation hmm let, let me tackle that question from few different points um sure. so one is and and this i have been seeing through my practice as an educator your most formative vision forming world view forming experiences happen during childhood right you know what you will believe in stand mm. for uh things you will aspire towards 
and so to have these kind of deeply emotionally linked formative experiences in uh the human and more than human landscape especially in the places we live in is extremely important right. especially as children yeah mm. so i have i have taken for instance a 3 year old 4 year old children yeah. uh to see dragonflies okay and then 10 years later they are mad about dragonflies because okay. one was able to create that experience which i am not attributing to myself the <laughs> somehow something happened where it just stuck on and 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 children found a kind of a connection and solace in that insect mm-hmm. uh doesn't all uh, happen all the time but but just to uh just as an example of how important childhood experiences are so so for the child and for the parent and educator to create these important immersive experiences that is one second thing now in a lot of recent campaigns one of the things which has been saving places and us is something called citizen science yeah and what that means is there are platforms examples would be ebird i naturalist season watch india biodiversity portal here what people can do is they see stuff so that day we went on the beach we right. see uh, hermit crabs and ghost crabs and bivalves we take pictures of them if we know what they are we can put it up on these platforms uh, and it becomes data for that specific place okay yeah and children can do it uh, anybody can do it a non you know conservation person a uh, 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 it uh, you know engineer can do it for, for a, a random example yeah um and there are people there in the platform who will help kind of further identify or correct to have discussion around these things over time what happens is that this becomes a database yeah mm. now data is data yeah. data is also stories yeah yeah which can evoke people into action so i'll give you some examples for vedandangal uh, a bird sang oldest indian bird sanctuary there was yeah. a pharmaceutical company trying to expand there okay. and the they produce something called an environmental impact assessment okay which is usually a bunch of lies yeah <laughs> they say oh nothing is going to happen so oh, we are going to improve everybody's lives and everything no um so they said there are about 25 species of birds there and there some and they make it seem as a big scientist went and did that any 8 uh, year old child you take to vedanangal will know that you can see about 50 species on any day yeah yeah the birds recorded the cross 200 species so mm. we took e bird data and showed uh, used it to show that these guys were lying and e bird data is contributed by who by literally anybody right from you know uh, teens and pre teens and and just any member of public yeah similarly we had a campaign for adyar estuary where a loop road was going to be built on the beach uh hosting to uh, not to you know six or seven fisher villages there and they said okay. that's a barren land there nothing lives there we okay. had citizen times data uh from you know ebird and i naturalist to show look pictures plus lists of everything which lives there including all of ridley sea turtles wow. which of course um you know a group called student sea turtle conservation network has data on again a kind of citizen science initiative where anybody goes uh and and uh, patrols beaches uh and and kind of works to protect turtles yeah so that is something anybody can be involved in you know in, uh, children especially yeah. yeah no that's really cool to hear you know and i think the fact that you can link it to real life experiences like this just hmm. i think goes to show that it's really like the small steps that really can make a big difference um and you know more power to you in the work you're doing um so yeah i think finally what i would like to ask you is what would you like for readers to take from this lovely book of yours pro rock okay so this book is written with the intent that it can kind of vividify somebody's experience of walking on a beach especially a child's but yeah anybody's yeah uh, we we all have our own inner child uh so 
um you know i i like saying this i've said, said this in too many places that barrenness is a state of mind never a state of land um you, you know so if, if you know how to look and if you can look deeper there's so much life in on course and you also find that it's essential for human life yeah. um there uh, we call them ecosystem services as as if they were they were doing a service for us but uh, yeah they 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 protect our ground water they prevent uh, they protect us from storms and, and so on a lot of other things uh, and the hope is that somebody will read this and their experience of walking on the beach watching the ocean uh, and the you know sand in front utterly changes it becomes a a portal they can enter and disappear into uh, and and make this space a kind of a magical world uh, that's that's really the hope for me yeah so and see. you know yeah. no but i i think uh-huh. you know if the book is for you know children above eight eight and above but i really think even adults can take so much from this book just in terms of you know the vibrancy of coastal life right and what's going on and things you would never really think about and understand so i think you really do kind of open up that world view to people through this book um i've read it i've seen it in close development so i mean i so you know i can really say that people will take uh, take away uh, that experience from this and yeah more power to you yuvan and all the amazing work you do keep doing what you're doing it's incredible keep doing more show walks i'm sure people are just going to keep coming and learning from you and yeah thank you so much for being here and thank you everyone on the ig live for making it here today it was so lovely chatting with you thank you thank you everybody hey thank you sangeeta bye bye